good evening everyone so uh, i would like to welcome you all in the second day session of bridge design and analysis so today we are going to learn the analysis of the bridge structure using stat pro software so here you will be getting idea what all different types of loads are there on the bridge structure how it is different from your like normal structure called as a towers your building and other types of structure so here you are going to understand the coding systems and the different loading condition which is going to apply on your bridge structure so i request you all please make your notes also if you are trying to understand some major concept you may make the note of that and we'll try to give you the answer of your query at the end of the session in case if we are not able to provide you in today's like live session then you can also write down your points in our whatsapp group or in the chat box we will take your doubt and we will especially give your call for that part so i request to ma'am to start the today's session and we'll be having the attendance at again 7 pm and we are going to match with the attendance sheet so those people who are like a marking attendance here and in the whatsapp group with like we are going to provide excel sheet so we'll be providing a certificate after today's that part also we will uh, we are going to explain you after today's evening session how to get your certificate how to download it and what all other opportunities i prime can provide to you guys uh ma'am you may start your session okay yeah hello hi everyone so yesterday we saw the uh, concept of bridges and how to apply the loads we saw about the loads and different type of sections so today what we are going to uh, see is we are going to design the same uh, bridge taking one span and uh, the rectangular sections and then we will be able to apply the vehicle loads as per the codes irc codes and then we are going to see the displacements and how the uh, wheel is going to impact our beam so we are going to use two type of loads self weight and vehicle loads so let us start with a new project so uh, since the uh, units are in meters i am leaving it to the default one and it is a space structure because it is a three dimensional structure so i go for space and uh, here i am going to give a name for that say bridge design say next and i yeah i'm going to use one single node and create a whole bridge so now you can see that the user interface is getting opened this is a graph actually so you can close it we do not want this graph now the bridge is very uh, simple so i'm going to use first only one uh, span which is the length is of 20 meters so first let us have a node so i'm placing a node which is at the origin 0 0 you can use the tabular column also there are a lot of methods of modeling we can use either this type of modeling so the first part of that is first so that is how the work process work flow goes is first you need to model the geometry then we will be applying the materials so once the materials are applied then we will go for the sectional properties the beam section and the column uh, if it is there otherwise we will say beam sections and then we go for the supports so once the supports are given we are having different types of loads and then we will do the analysis so this is how the process goes so now i have taken Uh, the length of the bridge that is one span 
is the printing meters. So I'm just going to use this node using the nodes cursor to select. I'm selected that node. And then I'm going to use geometry. There is a command called translation will repeat. Now my span can be in X direction or the Z direction. So it does not uh, matter now. So let us take the X, uh, Z direction. And since the span is 20 meters, I'm specifying the span here. And in order to form the beam, I can say link the steps and say OK. Now my bridge width, so this is the length of the bridge. So if you want to have a look at the dimensions, you can have this cursor called node to node distance and check out the length. That is 20 meters. So I'm switching off that. Now using the beam cursor to select. Now I'm going to specify the width. So you can use different methods again. Uh, I'm using again a translational repeat because uh, normally uh, if you see the bridge uh, span is 7.5 meters. So if I say in, in the center, I have a beam, so I can specify this as 3.75. I'm dividing it into two. There's also 3.75. So when you say link the steps and say, OK, automatically your uh, uh, width beams are formed. So I got this. So let us check. So note to note distance here, 5 meter. Here the, oh, it is, it is 5 meters. So I, I should have 3.75 and 3.75. So you can just uh, use Control C and Control V. Here you can type 3.75 and say OK. You can see now that the beam is not connected. So that is why a Control C, Control V has to be used in specified where you don't want to connect. So now I can again do a paste 7.5 because now you can check, just always have a check 3.75 so total distance is 7.5 that I have confirmed. Okay. Now I want to connect the beams in the width so geometry, we have the add beam. Geometry, add beam from point to point. So I'm connecting the width beams. So once I've connected, now the beams are formed, the geometry of the beam is formed. I've not given any sectional properties to it. But again, uh, when you have a bridge, you have a deck slab. Slab is there. So I need to form the slab also. So in order to form the slab, our tool has a tool called add plate quadrilateral. But if you specify this, uh, you will have a, a slab, single slab from the corner. This corner you can see that the difference, let me first show you the difference. See, if I do this, one single slab will be connected. So you can go to the rendered view and check that it is a single slab that is connected. But in a deck, there will be not single slabs, but there will be a lot of slabs, uh, pieces. So that we call it as mesh here. So meshing is the best option for creating the plates. So we go for the geometry, generate surface mesh. That will give you more accuracy, but uh, I'll tell you why we are using this and the difference between the plate. Okay. So generate surface mesh. 
First, let us complete this and then I'll show you what is the difference. So I'm just meshing this. Quadrilateral meshing, you can specify and say okay. Look like. Similarly, this side. Quadrilateral machine and say and apply. So you can see that the bridge uh, deck slab is now meshed. So you can see even the beam has split now. Previously, it was one single beam before meshing. Uh, you could see there was only one beam, uh, here there was one beam, here there was another beam. Here there was another beam and the another beam. So there are four, four, four beams. But now, since I have meshed, I have got lots of beams. So why is this meshing done? Now meshing is done because I want the load of the text lab to be taken by the beam. If you use a quadrilateral plate then that does not happen which does not happen the load from the slab will not be transferred to the beams so we do not use the quadrilateral plate you see while modeling when we model this quadrilateral plate uh, this was a triangle so when we modeled this plate, I connect it to the four nodes only. So this four nodes are connected to the plate, but whereas the beams are not connected to the plate. Only if you mesh, there is an integrity between the plate and the beam, and that will help in the transfer of the load from the plate to the slab. That is why the meshing is happening, but uh, it will lead to a one small issue that here, you see the beam is also split. So instead of designing one beam, here if you see in the width direction, the beam is also split here into small, small dimensions. So the designing of the beam will become an issue. So when to use this mesh? The meshing should be used only when you want the analysis results and then take the analysis results and design manually. If you are going as a design concept, then instead of modeling the plates, you have to use the floor load. That is for the building. So that is why when we talk about the buildings, the slabs are not modeled, but the load of the slab is given as a floor load. Now, once this is modeled, now we need to apply the beam sizes. Now, let us say, uh, that uh, beams, they are called girders, not beams. They are very deep beams, so they are called girders. So now the size of the beams should be bigger. Okay. So depth should be more. So that is why uh, we go for commands, member property, prismatic, since they are concrete members. We have a rectangle here. We specify the depth and the width of the beam. And so that it gets added to your um, property um, properties and then you will select and then assign, assign to the structure. Now how to select? Now we have lots of beams and all the beams have the 
sales sites. So we go for select beams parallel to X and beams parallel to Z. This is where our beams will be selected. And then since they are selected, you can use the assign to selected beams. Right? Now, if you want to see in the rendered view, you can see the rendered view. The beams are formed. Now, the integration is proper. Okay. Now, we'll be assigning the thickness to it. Thickness, the plates, the slab thickness has to be assigned. Okay. So, the next uh, job would be to apply the property for the slab. So, slabs will have what thickness? So, you need to select the slabs and assign a thickness, say, 250 mm. So, we'll say 0.25 because 250 mm is 0.25 meter. And this is the beam size was 750 mm by 450 mm. So, that is why we specified it as 0.75 by 0.45. So, how do you do that? Select by all plates. All the plates are selected and then go for commands plate thickness. So, you say 0.2 by 250 mm will be that will be taken. Sign and pitch. So, here a bridge is modeled. So, once you know that this is what you're going to do, the modeling and becomes very, very simple and easy. If you select only the plates, then you can see the thickness. So you can see here the thickness is shown. Okay. okay. Now once the thickness is done, we need to specify materials. What about materials? So have we given our materials? So we have the uh, commands plate thickness. Here you see the material is automatically there. So we need not give a command specifically for materials. Okay. Now next will be your supports. Now there are a lot of supports available. So here we are going to give as pinned because we understand the soil is loose. So we have to specify based on the soil. We are uh, specifying it has to be pinned. So how do you do that? Normally, we have the command support specification. Here you have lots of um, supports. So fixed support, pinned support, fixed but, enforced, enforced but are um, for um, research purpose. Research purpose means normally a building a support is taken as fixed. Because we have the foundation which is fixed. But what happens when you want to have a study saying that the soil under uh, after 10 years or 15 years has become loose. So how will you do that? How will you uh, tell a software that the uh, well, uh, the soil uh, the support has, soil has become loose and it has um, water? So the Putting, uh, has the tendency to move in both the directions. So you need to tell that when you do a study. So that kind of support you can specify using this enforced and enforced part. We have this inclined support. This is the support uh, you can give for yesterday we saw suspension bridges. Yes, and that I told you that the high tension cables are connected so they give the inclined support. So you can use the inclined support for that kind of uh, purposes. 
Now let us say this is not fixed, we say pinned. So what is the difference between fixed and pinned? Fixed will have no resistance. Here you can see that when I tell it is fixed, it is restrained. So Fx, Fy, Fz, Mx, Myy, Mz are restrained. That means there is no movement and uh, no rotation. So that is why these are restrained. Here the moment is not there, but the moment is not there. It's free to rotate, whereas the forces are restrained. And so means add it. So you can specify the support control, press control to select the top because on the sides only we are fixed. So come back here, assign to selected nodes. Select the support. Once you select the support, this will go up. So you can either select like this. You can go for this. You're doing and drag the window so that your ports are selected. Assign to selected nodes, assign yes. The support is specific. Right. Now, when we talk about the loads, so first is the self-weight because the self-weight is already there. Uh, how to calculate the self-weight volume of the beams into density of the material? That is what is self-weight. The self-weight is calculated by STAD automatically. You need not specify anything. Why? Because we said volume into density. The density of the material has have we given? Yes, we have given it. Concrete, when we say it takes the density. Then uh, what about the volume means? Length into breadth into thickness or length into breadth into depth. So have we given the length? So we have specified the length here. The width and the depth. Yes, we have specified the um, width and the depth of the beams and the plate thickness also. So there is no necessity for specifying uh, separately. It is just to give the command called self weight. So let us define a load that is the dead load, which is the self weight. So how to give that? Go to commands, loading. We have primary load. So in that, you need to specify that it's a dead load. You can specify DL or any other load case if you want. Otherwise, just add it. So we have added the load. Close it. We have added the load title. Okay, not given the command. So if you want to specify the command, select that, click add, and here you can see the load is specified. Why is this minus? Minus means the load is acting downwards due to gravity, so that's why it is minus. So we say add and close. So any load that you bring to that will have a question mark, which means we have taken the load from the table, but not assigned to the structure. So, so we have to assign it to the structure by selecting and adding it to the view. Assign to view, assign. This is the dead load. Now,
Now we go for the live load, which is the vehicle load. So when you go for the vehicle load, you need to specify here, let us say, our, we are going to take our code. So here you can see that when we used our code IRC, class A and class B loads, here, this was the thing that we saw here, we have the vehicle, wheel one and wheel two, these were the loads on the wheels. Okay, so load one, load two, the wheel load, 114 kilonewton, then the 68, 68 kilonewton. Okay, so at 1.2 meter, that's the distance between the wheel and the width is 1.8 meter. So we need, we are going to define the vehicle loads. So you can see here the section. So this is the brick slab. Okay, so this is the wheel. And this is the width of the uh, load 1.8. So there are two vehicles. So I'm going to place two vehicles, vehicle one and vehicle two, and at, at some uh, place, and then we are going to see how that will take our displacement. Okay. So remember this, the 27, 27, 16, and 68 is there, 68 kilonewton. And with the distance of 1.1 meter, 3.2 meter, and 1.2 meter. So remember this when I try to draw the vehicle and uh, apply it. So now I come here. Here we go for commands, loading, definitions, vehicle load. So now if you want, you can specify here the number. You cannot write a text here. Say H or 20 truck and all. You cannot write a class A. You cannot write. So I'm just specifying vehicle definition 1. And the width was 1.8 meters. So you saw here, this was 1.8 meters. So that is the width of the vehicle. Now, the load. So I'm specifying the vehicle load and the distance. One point one meter first. Press and enter. I'm just deleting this because it got entered. I can say edit. That is 1.1 meter. And here, the next load that is uh, here, when you see this uh, power point, that is 3.2 meter. That is 114, 3.2, 114, 3.2. That's a maximum load. Minimum load, maximum load is what is shown. So let us say 114 kilonewton. Which is, which was a width of 3.2. Let me, uh, we have to type all the loads. That is our work. So let me uh, type 68 was there and which was at a distance of 4.3. So you can see here. So this is 4.3, then 68, 68, 3, then 68, 68, 3 meters. That is what I am just entering. Okay, so I'm just changing it. 
because that is getting connected. So I need to have, this is the one vehicle load, which is here, this is your that part. Another vehicle load, so I'm going to define that. So here, again, the width is 1.8 meter. The same, you need to specify once again, because both that is the heaviest load which will be on both when uh, you have to use the maximum uh, load available. Consider ma maximum load. So that is why we take the heaviest vehicle and apply it on the both sides. So let us see how that beam is going to affect. Here we have no other go, but we need to type this one by one. Then we had one one fourteen. 3.2. So you can have even a look at this and then type it. We have defined the two vehicles. So I'm changing it. So you can see that there will be two vehicles. This is one vehicle, this is another vehicle. Now I need to specify where it is. That uh, is what we need to be um, careful. So for that, we have to go here in the lowest details. So here, that is the dead load. So I want to have a live load, new. Select and add it. In that, there is a, here you cannot find it. Can you see that here there is no vehicle now? So what you need to do is select and you will say new. When you say new again, see here there is load case. Here we have the moving load. So that is where we need to specify it. And we need to specify in such a way that the number of loads to be generated, it is asking. That means it has to move from this vehicle, uh, this portion, 0 to 20 meters. So you need to generate a number of loads, say 100 I am generating. Let's go and uh, see the details later. I'll explain that later. Those to be generated is 100 and we have, when you say here, we'll say load generation type, you have to say first add, so I type 100 here, load generation, add it and then I have to go to load generation type. What is this? It is a position of the load. So you need to specify here the two types. 
first one the second one first one i'm specifying the coordinate that is the position of the vehicle so x is 1 meter the zero means the vehicle will be at the corner if you say zero i'll tell you the vehicle will be here so that is why i say x 1 meter and here i need to provide vehicle to start from here not at this one that is why i specify this as 1.95 that is where the position is and it has to go towards the z increment means it will be moving in the z direction because you see this is the z here it, if you say x means it will move like this but i have, i want the vehicle to move along the length of the bridge which is in the z direction for our purpose so here i will say 0.25 means if i mm 25 mm it should move or 250 mm sorry 250 mm by 250 mm it should move only if it moves by 250 mm into 100 times you will get uh, the 20 meter distance otherwise you will not get so there is a relation between the number of loads to be generated and this z increment so let's say it's from by not by and that should be the correct position because i have divided the mesh now 20 into 10 or 7 pieces so based on that i am specifying So you have to say add. Let's see if that is correct. Otherwise, we will change it. We'll see if it is added. Okay. So next for that second load. So here I want to place that load here somewhere. Okay. So this is from three point seven five from the center from this part this part middle, and so I want to place it here. So let's say. Uh, Two meter, and the z coordinate will be four point eight. Let's see if it is working properly. Otherwise, we can change it. Okay, and we will say add. Only thing is, if I place this, you will not be uh, here. One vehicle is there. Can you see the two wheels are there, and uh, from the uh, front. You see the load here, and uh, in between the width was one point eight meter, and there were the, the these wheels were shown. So if I click this, so that direction I think it should be uh, not uh, here too. I'm just editing it. This one. Should be x coordinate should be, uh, I think 4.8, and z coordinate should be. Two. Let's see. Ah, uh, so this is where I want the vehicle to be. So both vehicles are available. You can see both vehicles are available at their positions, and they will try to move from that part when they try to move. Okay, if you place this, you see here, in in type one, it is here one meter. So here also, let's um, our vehicle is moving from here one meter. So I'll say, if the uh, x coordinate is z is two, I'll say z is one meter. Let's see how. See, you can see now that it is moving from that. Okay. So when it starts moving from here, we can see how much of this. Load is going to affect these beams. Three beams are available at sites. So how is it is going to impact the movement? Uh, the movement will impact the beam bending. Okay. So I have done this. Now we will say commands analysis perform analysis because I have not given the combination because I want to show I want to see how only the uh, vehicle load is going to affect. Uh, bending. So 
So I've done the analysis. So once you do the analysis, you can see how the vehicle will be moving along the bridge and then it will show the effect also. Okay, now we go for the post-processing mode. Here you can see that the uh, deflection is shown uh, because of the load here. We have the loads to be generated. So here the load is load 3. I switch on this load. You can see that vehicle is uh, converted. That vehicle which we had given is converted to point load. So you can see that point load which the vehicle was having, it is converted to point load on the side beams because there are only three beams. You see the rendered view here, you can see that these were the beams. So it is going to show the effect. So start automatically converts that load into the point load. Okay. So if you switch on the, first let us switch on the bending moment. You can see how the vehicle is moving. Now we can see the movement also. Here, when you see that, uh, say shift P for vehicle, the load is getting converted. So I'm switching off because it is disturbing. So and I'll, you can see how the bending is happening. And you all know that bending values can be taken. Now let's see how the vehicle moves at 25 250 mm. Okay, from here you can see at every 250 mm, can you see that the vehicle is moving? You can see how the vehicle is moving. I'm switching off the deflection. Let us see how the deflection can also be seen. As the Vehicle moves, you can see how the bending is obviously it was very heavy. Now it is because the last wheel is coming. See how again I'm reversing the vehicle. You can see the bending is getting more and more as the wheels are entering into the how the bending, the second wheel is entering, the third wheel is entering. The fourth wheel is entering, the fifth wheel is entering, the sixth wheel. So like that, you can see how the bending is going on when uh, it's heavy. And the, for the values, you can uh, read that beam. Okay. When you click the beam, you get the bending values here. Here there are the bending values you get. Or you click the center part, whichever beam you want, you double click that. You get that shear bending values here. Okay, so based on the uh, load that you take automatically, you will be getting the bending values. So if you want to see the deflection here, um, for the load case two, if you want to animate kind of an animation, I can do that. You can see how the bending is done for this is the load case, the fourth load case. So as the load goes on, vehicle goes on moving, you can see the bending. The wheel is not shown, the load is not shown now for the deflection. But you can see on the top, based on the load, how it is bending. Uh, the deflection. The section displacement also can be uh, seen for the different loads. So uh, I'm doing the section displacement now.
are the loads that you see. You can see the plate stresses also. If you want to take the bending of the uh, plates, you can have that. If you want to see it in the uh, different view, so I can show that. Okay, the loads are there. You can see the reflection now. You are not able to see, but the bending you can be able to see here in the stuck bending. The bending is so large. Here. the vehicle is moving and the bending effect so it goes on decreasing as the vehicle uh, the load on the wheel goes over the bridge movement is very so because we said 250 meters if you want less um, then you need to specify even uh, less that is where the relationship here is in the modeling the relationship comes between this so that uh, needs to be understood very here i told you the relationship here okay so here we said 250 meters uh, 250 uh, m 250 mm yeah? so if i try to edit that i'll make it point one means 100 meter every 100 meter you're going to get the bending I'll change it for this one. So uh, once again, you need to analyze that. Only then you will be able to see the effect. Because for, for the first type, I have reduced that. For the second type, I have not reduced. So I go for the post processing mode so that I can see the effect of the vehicle. So this will, will be less and this will be more. Movement here, it will be 250 meters, here it will be only 100 meters. Very slowly, so you will get effect um, on every 100 meter. The bending moment on every 100 meter effect is going to show on this speed. This is how you generate the bending moments if you want the plate stresses. So here you have the plate stress. For whatever stress you want, you can take the global stress or you can say this one local. And why local? And you can design the slab manually. So, moment on this beam, or uh, moment on this slab. So, how it is 7.6 kilonewton meter per meter. That is how the moment of the y direction. So, if you want. So here we have this minus 78 kilo newton meter per meter. So that is where you will take the moment and you will design it for 78.1. So that is the moment you will design and uh, the main rods will be designed. And then for the um, shear, shear uh, syrups, you can take that shear y in the local. So shear is not that much, shear in x. That is also not. Moment is there. So you can have the maximum absolute stress on the slab also. So that you can animate.
with the deflection. So you can show that. So this is how your vehicle loads will be applied to a bridge and then it will be designed. So let us see one more or type where we have the masonry bed, masonry arch uh, dams. So this is one type of a bridge. The masonry arch, if you have a masonry arch here, it's a culvert kind of a thing. So in that they have given uh, arch type of beams here and they have applied here a lot of trucks available. So it just can be applied individually as a point load also. But the modeling is uh, a bit complex, but not impossible, but it is complex. So you need to calculate as per the formulas, the position of this arch. If you are able to calculate by the formulas, then you will be able to get these points. So let us see the loads here. So since you have seen how to apply here now, if you feel that uh, there are a lot of sections specified, and um, in the loads, you can see that they have not used the vehicles, vehicle load directly, but they have specified it as um, point loads directly, the effect they have specified. But if you specify the vehicle definitions, it is going to convert it for you. So both ways can be done. So whichever way you feel like uh, that can be applied. If you see that conversion. Here it is converted and then applied as a point load. So three trucks are there, HS20 truck, then um, VLC truck. So you have to apply the loads. That's one, one more truck is there. That is one more truck, 45 ton truck. So all the places the trucks are there, so that is the heaviest load applied. So we can see the bending and the shear. So you can see that uh, since they have not, again I'm repeating this, since they have not specified the uh, vehicle definition, they have converted. We saw the conversion, how it converted that vehicle load into point load on the beam. So similarly here they have converted it in applied. So both ways can be possible. So it's based on the structural engineer, how he uses it. Let's see that analyze and analysis. And we will see the bending. But here you cannot see that animation, like how the vehicle is moving. Because they have converted into, into loads. Since in the vehicle definition, it is converting, so it is able to show how it is moving. So here if you switch on the bending, see for every truck you need to define uh, individually. You want to see the effect. Okay. So with this, I uh, stop here uh, for the software session. So any doubts, uh, we can go for the doubt clarification uh, sessions.
Okay. All clear, Sumit? Okay. Abhishek, there's no doubt. Okay. Yes, Priyansh, you have some doubt. Can you please type the doubt? Hello, everyone. So thank you so much for joining this wonderful yeah. session. And now I'm going to tell you how you can generate your certificates and how iPrime can provide you the opportunity in future. You'll notice one thing, maybe like many of you already know number of software, how to operate it. But when it comes to design some industrial project, simulations, so it is quite difficult for you because you haven't worked in the college curriculum, right? The calculation is quite different, but when it comes to solving real problems, there's a requirement of lots of practices over the loading condition, the formulas, the coding part, there are lots of factors that we need to consider. So it is always easy for you if you want to upgrade yourself in particular technology, a particular software, try to solve number of projects of the industries. How you can get the industrial project, the values and all, for that we can provide you the support and we can assist you. So iPrime skill uh, is basically an innovative community of engineers where we are having the experts from across the globe. They are providing a technical support to engineering students, different strengths. The only problem is for engineering students, they are not having proper data of the things. Okay, whether it is computer science, if they are going to solve some data analytics problem, machine learning, when it comes to mechanical, if they are going to do any kind of crash analysis of the vehicle, same thing for civil engineers, when they are trying to do different analysis of the structure, it can be bridge, can be the water tank, it can be a dam, can be the building. So to get the proper data of the structure, the values of the loadings and all, it requires proper like a guidance by the industrial experts. So our experts provide proper guidance to our students who are willing to upgrade themselves, want to become an industry ready engineer before their final year only. So how we support this friend, we are having a wonderful content uh, developed by experts from industry. We provide the same content in terms of our courses or MC program, which is live or in uh, recorded session with us. We do provide. And if students are facing any kind of difficulty, any kind of doubt, then we provide the support also, the tech support. How you can resolve your doubt, how to rectify all the problems, how you can get your complete verified result, which can be considered as your final year project. Or if you're going to submit to any of the industry, they can approve your design. You want to take patent also of your design or the copyright of your complete case studies. Uh, all the support we do provide. We also guide you how to prepare your portfolio so that you can approach number of civil industries, not only in India, but across the globe, and you can get a wonderful opportunity from them. So now you have to download your certificate through our like a certificate portal. This is the link. We'll provide the same link to your WhatsApp group and we'll also post it here. The certificate will be available on this particular website on 1st September. So please do not try to download your certificate before 1st of September because it requires two to three days to verify your data and to generate your certificate code, which can be verified by any company. If you're going to apply for a job and you're going to mention you have completed this particular workshop. The company used to verify the certificate, so we need to create a unique code for you. So which will be available on 1st of September. You have to visit to this particular link. And uh, there like you can select the your event name that is a bridge, uh, bridge design, like your event name. Okay, so it will be available here. Okay, the workshop or like uh, on construction planning like that, there will be a workshop on bridge design and analysis, this one. You can enter your registered email ID with your attendance email ID only. Okay, and you can generate your certificate. So this is the like a way you can generate through there. And you can visit our website if you want to get more information about iPrime skill, 
our products, our courses, and how we are going to provide you support in future to provide you industrial relevant courses and training, and also to support you in all the aspects of your technical problems. You can visit on our portal, you can send your inquiry over there, you can ask your doubt also through our portal only, and our technical executive, or our consultant will connect with you to provide you all the information. You can visit to our internship page where you will find all the information, the topic which is available for you. Like uh, right now for you, they have building design and analysis using Stat Pro Revit with construction project management. So this product is available. You can visit over there. You can get the entire information about this particular coursework. So if you are having any query, feel free to uh, drop your doubt in the WhatsApp chat box and we'll be providing the upcoming session also, the, like related to civil technologies in the month of September, it can be uh, surveying or it can be related to something which is more, uh, you can say in trending related to civil engineering. You can also send your suggestions on which topic you want to workshop or any kind of training from us in YouTube or like on directly if you want to connect with us for one-to-one -one session also can send your inquiry to us. So thank you so much for joining this wonderful session. Thank you so much everyone.